Now let's look at our first problem. This is a very simple problem. This is a single linear mass. It is attached by a spring to this wall, by a damper to this wall, and there's a force F that is acting on this mass. Now the objective here is to find the equations of motion for this mass under this uh, driving force, uh, this external force here. So the first thing you will do is establish uh, directions of displacement and for that you will need a coordinate system. So this is fixed to the non-moving ground. So this is an inertial frame of reference. So everything will be measured with respect to this coordinate system. Now, as with respect to this coordinate system, going in this direction is positive. So in this, we are not just worried about the x direction because y direction, nothing moves. All the forces are balanced. Uh, so we're looking at the x direction only. So moving in this direction like that, going in the positive x direction is positive. So we'll establish direction of displacements. Um, so we have displacements. Uh, velocity and acceleration all moving this side is positive now look what happens here uh, next thing we do is find the magnitude of forces in the springs and dampers now if this mass moves by x in this direction this spring gets extended by x therefore the force in the spring is k times x and similarly if this mass moves forward like that like that uh, with speed x dot this damper gets uh, compressed on this end at the rate x dot so, so the force in the damper is given by b times x dot remember this this end is fixed so this end is fixed as well so the relative uh, speed between the ends here is x dot the relative displacement between these ends here is x so these equations uh, hold so the next step is to draw the free body diagram. So we'll look at all the forces that act on the mass. Okay. So there's a force F already here. That's right here. I put that one here. Now what does the spring do? Since the mass moves X like that, the spring goes into extension. And when the spring goes into extension, its tendency is to pull. So the spring will try to pull the mass back since it's in extension. So you could say that... Um, the force Fk pulls the mass in this direction. Now remember this happens to be in the negative x direction so this force is going to be negative. Uh, while as what about this here? Now, this moves, tries to push the damper like so in this direction. The damper will push back on this mass. So the damper force on this mass will again act in the opposite direction of the, uh, of the velocity or the speed you could say. So Fb the damping force will act in the negative x direction. So that is your um, free body diagram right here. And then you apply Newton's second law of motion. So mx double dot. Now remember that this here is positive because we assume that it's moving in the positive x direction. So mx double dot is sum of all forces in the x direction, which is this force, which is positive, positive x direction, minus this force, which is negative x direction. That's why this is negative minus this force which is again in the negative direction that way and we put in the values of all these forces like so and then finally we get our equation. One thing you must notice here is the signs of the coefficients of x double dot, x dot and x should be of the same sign. So this m is positive, b is positive, k is positive. So if you get one of these of a different sign in between then there's something wrong with your equations of motion. That's a, just a short way to check your equations. Now let's look at a rotational system. So we have a rotational mass that is attached to a combined spring and damper. Now this is the wall which means that this end will not move and let's say there is a torque tau acting in this direction. So the first thing you do is establish direction of displacement just like you did in the linear uh, system. So we are looking at this uh, system from here. So this would be the z axis of the inertial frame of reference right here. So z axis is pointing out of the wall or out of the paper. Um, so we put in a positive direction of displacement, acceleration and uh, velocity theta dot is uh, velocity, theta double dot is acceleration, counterclockwise direction, counterclockwise is considered positive. So if uh, the z-axis is pointing out of the paper, you look at the z-axis and the counterclockwise direction is positive.
that's the first part second part is you find the magnitude of the force and torques in the springs and dampers now let's look at the spring part of it so if this gets twisted counterclockwise by theta then the spring force the spring uh, force I, know, I shouldn't say force but the torque is given by k times theta and theta is the relative angular displacement between the two ends this end is fixed this end moves by theta so the magnitude of the spring force is given by k theta k is the rotational uh, spring constant notice that this is capital similarly that for the damper if this is moving by theta dot the relative speed between these two ends is theta dot because the speed here is zero speed here is theta dot so the relative speed between the two ends is theta dot and the speed is in uh, speed uh, is in the counterclockwise direction therefore is positive therefore the magnitude of the torque is given by capital B times theta dot B capital B here is the uh, rotational damping constant the step three is you establish the directions of the torques so you see this mass is moving this way the spring is getting twisted in this direction so what the spring will do is try to untwist therefore the torque tau k on the body due to the spring will be in this direction this is counterclockwise therefore this torque is going to be negative similarly the uh, rotational damper is being twisted uh, in the clockwise direction so it will try to untwist therefore it will exert a torque in the counterclockwise direction like so and uh, now finally you uh, so step four I should say uh, is draw the free body diagram this is in fact the free body diagram uh, so you draw all the four uh, torques the forces in the case of a linear mass system and then you apply equations of motion that is uh, Euler's law which is the equivalent of uh, the Newton's second law uh, for uh, linear system so for rotational systems you have Euler's law of motion which says that j times theta double dot is sum of all torques now you look at this uh, the applied torque tau a is in the counterclockwise direction that is positive tau k the spring torque is the negative uh, direction clockwise direction tau b the damping torque in the is in the clockwise direction negative again so sum of tau is going to be tau a minus tau k minus tau b you put in what tau k is tau b is like that and then finally you have your equation of motion once again notice that the sign of the coefficients of theta double dot theta dot and theta are all the same sign here positive in this case so this is a quick check if one of these becomes a different sign then you have made a mistake in your free body diagrams somewhere